YouTube is full of videos that promises a killer. You know, like Tesla killer or iPhone killer, GoPro killer. You get the drift. These almost always end up being a reasonable product, but no product dies. No killer, just a clickbait. But the product that I am going to be talking about today in this video, I genuinely think in time will kill the Australian residential fiber optics. And by that, I really mean that the NBN will cease to exist. It will be no more. It will perish and shall not return. How? Well, the signs are pretty much written on the wall and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. So let me very well start the video by showing you the product that I spoke of. A neat looking modem by Nokia got delivered to me and originally I was thinking of reviewing this like the usual thing I do here in this channel. But there is a much bigger picture to show you and a story to tell from my 8 year long experience of working for Telstra. So let's get the show on the road by looking at the modem. The modem is a 5G modem that in absence of 5G will fall back to 4G and so forth. Obviously, the first thing we all want to know is if it is fast. So I did a few speed tests and on speedtest.net it managed to hit a maximum of 233 megabits per second at night and on fast.com I got 112 Mbps during peak times. The location is patched to heights other places may not yield the same results or may even go better. But you get the drift. 5G is quite fast. So is 4G while we are at it. Next question. Why did I get this? Well, previously I was using a 4G modem with a limit of 500 gigabyte monthly for $85. And if I went over, it's $10 additional per 10 gigabyte. For the 5G, I'm paying $70 a month unlimited data and Optus will not penalize me for switching from one plan to the other. Why wouldn't I do it? Next question. Why am I using wireless broadband at all? Well, up until 2018 I had to use ADSL and not by choice. Wherever I lived, they did not have any other connection types available. Not cable and most certainly not NBN. So there came a time when I saw that there is a plan with enough data for my family to use at a reasonable cost. I took it and was instantly happy. So why didn't I consider getting NBN now, today? Well, I did ponder upon that and then said, nah. From the get go, it's more pricey and the speed is capped. So if you want higher speeds, you pay more. But that is not all of it. This is where I tell you a bit of the Telstra story. Back when I was working at Telstra as an exchange programmer in 2007, NBN was not in mass media as such. At the time, the telephony network, we referred to it as the copper network, was a crumbling infrastructure. Crumbling infrastructure? Why? Okay, here comes a bit of history. Originally, the telecommunications infrastructure was put in place by the Postmaster General of Australia. In 1901, Postmaster General started with the Telegraph and ended as Telecom in 1975. Side note, if you look at the long series of Postmaster Generals over the years, there appears to be some serious Game of Thrones stuff going on in there. One getting overthrown by the other. And those are some killer moustaches. Check it out. Anyhow, if we are walking down the street and we see a pit with initials PMG, it's a telephone pit. And who knows how old this thing is or, more importantly, the contents within it. There is no way a whole network of physically connected wires would continue to operate in its original performance specifications forever. Telecom eventually became Telstra. And that is where this crumbling network crumbles more like a cookie. Because Telecom was a government organization, Telstra was not, uh, is not. Telstra is a listed company in ASX and 
pays dividends to its shareholders. So if they spend billions to fix this old decaying network, not much money is left to pay out as dividends. And the sweet CEO bonuses. The copper network of Australia remained this corroding strands of metal under the ground. Any time it rained, we used to get spikes in complaints for service outage. The field technicians were being sent out to dispense band-aid solutions. If it breaks, fix that issue and only that issue. Don't fix nothing if it ain't broke. Upper management probably knew that a publicly funded network upgrade is on the horizon. You may be wondering, did they ever try anything else? Well, sure. There was the broadband internet cable or a service provided over Quexel cable, something that both Optus and Telstra started rolling out around the turn of the millennium, only to a handful of suburbs. Let's just say it did not work out so well, money-wise. So they stopped expanding on that. And most of the city was left to use the ADSL. The darn Australian ADSL. You see, the copper network was failing, causing nightmares for the internet users. But the number of internet users were rising year on year. The pressure was building. And along came this guy, Kevin O. Saving to the rescue. Like a champion, he announced in 2009, and I quote, Fiber to the Home National Network. As a prime minister, he started doing some radical stuffs. So in 2010, they kicked him hard where it hurts. <coughs> and since then, the fiber to the home promise was changed to fiber to the curb. They will bring fiber optic to the pit near the house. But from there, it's the old copper line. Not as good as the few lucky ducks who got fiber to the home but still an improvement over the ADSL as the length of the copper line is much smaller now. But wait, no, 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 even that was too much to ask for. So they reduced it to fiber to the node. And this node can be a few hundred meters away. This copper line could be the old PMG era relic, which can catch cold if it rains. Still better than the old ADSL, I suppose, but not by much. It is not broadband, Speaker. It is fraudband with a capital F. Hashtag fraudband. It's not just a Twitter hashtag. Fraudband actually is a clinical description of the opposition's policy. Hang on. There is even more. We did not even get this compromised version up until 2020 at my residence. Many houses are still not connected to NBN. 11 years since the announcement. And the final blow is, uh, there is still more to go. The cost till date for NBN is $51 billion and counting. There are about 14 million taxpaying individuals in Australia. So each one of us incur a cost of $3,642 in tax to pay for this. And now the main event. Why 5G is about to kill this Frankenstein's monster of a network. 5G is a network that is designed for mass load and is a natural successor to the 4G network. It is an infrastructure upgrade, but funded by consumers, not the government. It is already faster and cheaper than NBN and you can totally skip the NBN connection nightmare altogether. We were waiting for NBN for over a decade and when it is becoming available to more people, people got given a choice. For me, it was a no-brainer. And for purpose of property development, I move houses frequently. There is a whole other channel dedicated to that. All I have to do is pick up the modem and power it up in the new place. And we have connection. Don't even get me started with the old physical connection move order that we had to do before. And it always went wrong somewhere. Plus, they used to charge us like 50 to $80, something ridiculous like that. 
This modem you see here is only the start. Next, Vodafone will come along with similar services and TPG and INET and prices will steadily but surely drop like it has been for data in mobile phone plans. Using this service, we can watch Netflix or Disney or YouTube for that matter in 4K, no problems. Hell, I even asked Optus, if I'm going on a holiday, can I take the modem with me? They said, yes, <laughs> so long as we are in Australia. So to put it together, what Kevin Rudd promised, fiber to the home, that promise has long been brushed under the carpet. The area that I live in has no fiber to the premise connection. Most of the houses are fiber to the curb. But still, let's give it a shot. At Optus, NBN 100 by 20 is $95 a month. TPG will do for $89. Telstra comes in at $110 a month because they are the best. <laughs> but also say something interesting. As your connection type is not HFC or FTTP, unfortunately premium speed is not available. At least they are upfront and honest that you cannot reliably hit that sort of speeds through copper. $110, $95, $89 and we are not even sure we are going to hit the top speeds via this fiber copper mix hodgepodge network. Ladies and gentlemen, for $70 not on paper, but in practice, in real life, I got over 110 Mbps during peak hour. And at quiet times, the max was over 200. Given a choice like this, what will you choose? Hence me saying, 5G home broadband is the NBN killer. There is a whole lot more I have to say on this topic. Eight years of working with telecommunications giant, there are some funny stories to tell as well. But that's for another day. Today, I really, really need you to check out my other channel. Getting it off the ground is proving tough. But if you show support, one person at a time, it will surely grow. So please, do subscribe to Property Technical and give it some much needed oxygen. I'll catch up with you in the next video. Until then, you take care of yourself. No, I really mean it. There is a lot of bad stuff going out there and you gotta watch out and stuff. Eat well and stay healthy. Uh, bye for now.